Hey everybody, Backpack Hack here coming at you with another trail tip and today I'm going to do a review of the Etten, E-T, over the line over it, Etten, Eaton, Eton, I don't know how you pronounce it, Scorpion 2 multifunction electronic device. I don't really call this a radio because it does a little bit more than just receive the uh, radio bands. So let's get right to it. I bought this based on a few other internet reviews, gave it some good thumbs ups and so I decided to, to purchase this one. As like with all my reviews, nobody sent this to me for free. I had to buy it out of my own pocket. I don't have corporate sponsors sending me stuff to review online. So when I do a review of a product, it's out, it's, it's, I'm out of pocket. I had to pay for this to do this. Um, I bought this to complement my Kato KA-123. It's not a replacement. I'm just a firm believer of having a, a backup, a duplicate, more of one of anything that I have. My long-term goal is to have duplicates, so I have, if one fails, I do have a backup. But let's start right in on this. This is an AM FM weather band rechargeable. This actually has a few more features than my Kato, one being the solar panel, which uh, is kind of nice. I can just set this on the dash of my vehicle or set it out on the deck, or if I'm out camping, I can set it on the table or on a rock and let it absorb the sunlight. It's got a good speaker here. It's good and large. There's a carabiner up here, so you can hang it from something, a, a tree or a limb, or you can put a piece of uh, paracord through there, or you can hang it off your backpack. I, I wouldn't suggest that because otherwise you don't want it flopping around. But it would be handy to, to hang up. I'll get back to this in a little bit. On this side is the radio and flashlight controls. There is a power button here for the radio. There is a volume up button and a volume down button. There is a mode button here, so you can select between the the AM band, the weather band, there is also a charge mode that allows you to charge your external device like a, a cell phone, and FM. Um, there is a light that comes on when you first turn on the radio. Let me turn that down so you can hear me. The only problem is, is when you get into this mode, that light comes on, it's hard to see it when you view it from this angle. You have to turn it this way to, in order to view that display until that light goes off, and then the, the uh, display is a lot more readable. That is a minus in my book, but it is not a fatal flaw. Over here are the tuning buttons, so you can tune up and down, and a button for the flashlight to turn the flashlight on and off. On what I call the back side is a large crank handle for uh, charging the device by a crank. The, the manufacturer says you can get about a minute's worth of radio time by cranking that for four minutes. I've never really tried that. Um, I have been able to charge the battery sitting there for 15-20 minutes and, and get a sufficient battery charge that I know I can listen to the battery for or the radio for a long time. On this side is a bottle opener. I'm kind of uh, kind of eh about that because it's, it's just like, um, I don't know, silly to have a bottle opener on something like this. There's also an opening here. This little screw comes out and you can pull this cover off and you can access the battery. Now, I'm not a really big fan of what I call proprietary batteries. I would prefer, like here on my voice recorder, even though it's a modern device, it takes a standard AAA battery. I just happen to have an end loop in there simply because you can charge this battery by plugging it in to a USB port. Um, cell phones you can't do much about, but I'm not a big fan of a device like this taking a proprietary battery simply because if the battery goes bad, Usually, they're built into the device where you, the normal consumer can't get to them, and you got to throw the whole device away and buy a new one just because the battery goes bad. On this one, however, I don't know whether it was by design or whether they just came out that way, but you take the screw out, pull this cover off, and you have access to the battery, so you can replace the battery. So that is a big thumbs up in my book. So that, that, that alone, if this was not here and the battery was buried somewhere inside this device, I would not consider it. On this end... You've got the antenna, which comes out and articulates. And I like the way that this retracts back fully in. It doesn't stick out like my Kato does. And underneath this little flip-up rubber cover, you've got a headphone jack, which is kind of nice. So hopefully people who like to listen to their music out in the middle of nowhere can listen to it by themselves and not force everybody else to listen to their crap. 
It's got a charge port, a micro USB port here. This is to charge the internal battery. It also has a full-size USB connection here, so you can plug your phone into that connection and charge it. However, when I have tested that, this doesn't give very much of a charge to my, my smartphone. This is a Galaxy S5. In about four minutes, the battery in this was dead, and I only gained 3% of charge in my phone. So I really wouldn't rely on this to get too much of a charge in your phone. Maybe if you have a completely dead battery, this, if it's fully charged, might get you a couple minutes of phone time to make an emergency phone call, but I really wouldn't rely on that. And finally on this end is a flashlight. Um, when I first got it, I pushed the button and it's like, well, the flashlight doesn't stay on. Well, maybe that's a way that they keep you from running the battery down is to have you force you to hold that button. Well, I found I just wasn't pushing it tight enough or hard enough to make it stay on. And I don't know whether it was designed like this because there's no mention of it in the manual, but you could, if you wanted to, send Morse code simply by being very careful about how you press that battery button. These buttons are semi-recessed in here. In other words, they don't stick up. You can see that I slide my voice recorder across here and it's not hitting anything. That's a plus side, so you don't have to worry about uh, something pushing on it, you know, setting up against it. Uh, yes, something could push down into there. But on the minus side, you're not going to be wearing thick, heavy gloves and being able to operate that. I actually have to use my fingertips to reach down in there to push those buttons. I can't really, on a regular basis, use the side of my finger to get those to come on. So that is a plus, so they are rather difficult to use. So you, I mean, I think that's by design to prevent things from accidentally pushing that. Um, I'm not really thrilled with this uh, bottle opener. I mean, yeah, I, I get the idea of having it on there, but to tell you the truth, if I'm going to be out there opening up bottles of beer, I'm going to have a bottle opener. I'm not going to want to rely on this to open my bottles because if I'm in a situation where I need this, having a beer is going to be the least of my worries. I would much rather see a small compartment in here that's accessible with a slide off cover, something similar to this, where a person might be able to put a small fire starting kit or a small fishing kit. I think that would be a much better use of this space than a bottle opener. Um, my biggest point of contention is this carabiner. Yeah, I get the idea. You can hang it up. Uh, you can hang it up and have it illuminate your uh, campsite or the trail or what have you, or hang it up inside your tent. But the problem I have with it is it makes it such an odd shape that would make this difficult to pack efficiently inside of a backpack. It's plastic, which I could see in cold weather would get brittle and break off. Plus, it simply adds size and weight to the entire unit. Um, I'm not a big fan of it. I may sometime in the future just take my hobby drill or saw and just cut that off and see what I can do to uh, waterproof this back up. The manufacturer states that this is splash proof according to some cryptic uh, alphanumeric standard, which means you can splatter water on it, but it is not meant to be immersed. It's not waterproof. Um, my other contention is, and, and I'm going to throw a picture of it up here, uh, it is a nice bright flashlight. When you're in the dark, in a dark room or a dark area, it, it is a very nice flashlight, especially this bright area here in the center. However, when you start to pull out, you can see that it's got kind of a purplish tint, and that's very disturbing. Now, I realize it's not something that you're going to be using every day, but that pur pur purple tint was rather disturbing, and then it's got a kind of a yellowish haze or a yellowish halo around that. I suspect the LED that they've used in here was meant to be diffused because purple and yellow are complementary colors on the color wheel that a diffuser would mix those and you'd end up with purely white light. I've done some photometrics on it and that is true. I'm going to throw a photograph of, of that uh, purplish color right here so you can see what I mean. It's not very pronounced, but it's, it's enough to be disturbing. But I suppose, hey, if you're carrying this in your vehicle and you need to change a tire, you know, you have some flashlight that you can take out there. Is this something that I'm going to take on a backpack trip? Absolutely not. My Kato is going to be my go-to for my backpack trips. This, however, could be used more efficiently for vehicle camping. Uh, I could see that if the weather is going to be bad, I'm going to take this out, toss in the dash of my vehicle when I'm traveling in bad weather 
and that way at least I have a power source to uh, listen to the radio and maybe in an extreme emergency get a couple minutes of talk time on my phone. Um, anyway, that's just about my review. I haven't had a whole lot of uh, experience out in the field using this except for uh, I have taken some time and let it run down and I've charged it back up both with this crank charger and with the uh, the solar panel. How long will the battery last? Well, as I stated, you can access the battery in here and I thought it was a rather small battery when I cracked into this to see what was in here. I kind of suspected that's what it was, was the battery. And I thought, that's not a very big battery. So I put it to the test. What I did was, is I took it into a back bedroom, I turned on the radio and I turned on the flashlight and then just turned the volume down so I didn't have to listen to it. And I came back about an hour later and it was still running and um, it was down to two bars. You can see up here in the top right of the display, there's one, two, and three bars. I'm still at three bars. After about an hour, I was down to two bars and I thought, well, it might last an hour and a half, two hours. And then I absolutely totally forgot about it. Came back after six hours, the radio and the flashlight were still running. Now, if the flashlight was, if the light was a little bit dimmer, I never really paid any attention to that, but I thought, six hours. Yes, it was down to one bar, but the radio and the flashlight were still working after six hours. So that's a big plus. So on the plus side, on the pro side of this, I will give it definitely thumbs up for having the solar charger, the crank charger, at least an attempt to be able to charge your device. Maybe, you, like I say, you can get a few minutes of charge time out of a completely dead cell phone to make an emergency phone call. Definitely a plus to have the headphone jack, so if somebody uh, wants to listen to their crap music out in the middle of nowhere, they aren't forcing everybody else to listen to it. A plus with a very nice retractable uh, antenna, a plus for the recessed buttons, a plus for the very large speaker that is a very, very nice, nice sounding speaker, and a plus for a very, uh, very, very bright flashlight. The minuses, obviously, of course, again, that output capacity for charging an out external device, very, very limited. Um, I can't get it to go to three bars on the, the battery, no matter how long I charge this. Never been able to get it to three bars. Same thing with charging it with the solar panel. Never been able to get it to, th to three bars. However, if you don't charge an external device through this, even at two bars, you're probably gonna get three or four hours of battery and flashlight out of it. So getting back to three bars is not a goal. Getting two bars is gonna be more than sufficient for everybody. On the negative side, again, is the color cast of the purple and yellowish tint of the flashlight beam. And of course, my biggest pet peeve is this cheesy uh, carabiner on the end. Like I said, I just may decide to cut that off and make it a little bit more compact and light. Anyway, that's my review of the Etten Scorpion 2. This is Backpack Hack. Be safe out there, and I'll see you out on the trail.